What's going on guys, my name is Matt and I am back with a new PC build. This time the price point is $550 and for that price you're getting some killer performance. The system's perfect for those on a budget who are looking to get into PC gaming and even those looking to get into streaming because believe it or not this $550 system performs really well at streaming gameplay to sites like Twitch. I'm doing things a bit different this time around, this video will be discussing all the parts, showing how it performs in games and in streaming, and next week I'll be releasing a full in-depth guide on how to put this system together along with even more benchmarks. In terms of performance, this system is great for high refresh rate 1080p esports gaming and can even handle the latest and greatest AAA titles at well above 60fps. I'm super excited to show you the parts that make up this system, but first here's a word from today's sponsor. This video is brought to you by Asus and their NVIDIA RTX powered graphics cards. Asus stands out from the rest because of their auto extreme process which is 100% automated unlike other companies who have parts of their cards made by hand. Automating the process takes human error out of the equation and results in lower failure rates and more reliable cards. Asus GeForce RTX cards like this sweet RTX 2060 are powered by NVIDIA's Turing architecture. This allows you to experience today's biggest games such as Minecraft RTX like never before with the visual fidelity of real-time ray tracing and the ultimate performance of AI-powered DLSS 2.0. These cards also come with NVIDIA's NVENC encoder which is perfect for people wanting to get the most performance while streaming. Combining the precision of auto extreme manufacturing with RTX on enables one of the most reliable and visually immersive gaming experiences possible. Make sure to check the link in the description to learn more and thanks again to Asus for sponsoring this video. So this system is very well balanced in terms of the part selection and there's a lot of room for future upgrades. Let's start things off by talking about the CPU. What I went with for this system is the Ryzen 3 3300X, which is probably the best value for the money gaming CPU on the market right now. It has 4 cores with 8 threads and the ability to turbo above 4 GHz. The CPU is running on AMD's latest Zen 2 architecture and for around $120 this offers insane performance for the price. The only downside is the CPU can sometimes be hard to come by. Luckily the Ryzen 3 3100 can also be used which is generally easier to find and the gaming performance difference in this system will be less than 5% between these two CPUs. The great thing about going with either of these CPUs is they both offer great gaming performance up front but because they're on the legendary AM4 platform it means you have the option to upgrade to a Ryzen 5 or Ryzen 7 CPU in the future. Another awesome feature is the fact these are unlock chips meaning you're able to overclock them. I haven't overclocked this CPU in the system but I'll leave a link to an overclocking guide in the description if that's something you're interested in. To cool our CPU I went with the AMD Wraith Stealth Cooler that came included in the box. AMD stock coolers are usually what I go with unless it's a high-end build. This is because the performance they offer is great, they're free with the CPU, and they look really nice in my opinion. Definitely much nicer than the Intel stock cooler which hasn't been updated in over a decade. The Wraith Stealth Cooler is basically just a hunk of aluminum with a fan attached, but for a Ryzen 3 CPU it offers more than enough cooling capacity. Also, in next week's guide on how to build this PC, I'll be showing you how to rotate the shroud of this cooler so the AMD logo is facing up. Moving on to the motherboard, what I went with is probably the best value for the money AM4 board for people who aren't really interested in overclocking. This is the Gigabyte B450M DS3H which comes in at a little below $75. It has solid back panel I.O., 4 DIMM slots for easy RAM upgrades in the future, an M.2 slot, and even more. The VRM setup isn't great, but for most Ryzen CPUs at stock settings it'll work more than okay. It is in the Micro ATX format which which is important because of the case I went with. All in all, the B450M DS3H from Gigabyte was great to work with and I can highly recommend it. Next let's talk about RAM. If you're building a gaming PC in 2020, even one on a tight budget, you really need 16GB of RAM. Luckily, decent quality RAM is surprisingly affordable right now. For example, the 16GB kit of ADATA XPG RAM used in the system is clocked at 3000MHz CL16 and comes in at just $55. 
Ryzen depends heavily on fast RAM to operate at peak performance, and for a budget build like this, going for 3000 MHz RAM strikes a good balance of price and performance. Sure, you might be able to get a few extra FPS by going with something like 3600 MHz RAM, but that will also cost you quite a bit more. This is a two-stick kit, meaning it runs in dual-channel operation, which is important, and like I said before, our motherboard has four DIMM slots, meaning upgrading to 32GB of RAM is as easy as popping in another 16GB kit in the unpopulated slots. For storage, this is another area where you have a few options. What I went with is this 256GB Silicon Power A55 SSD. This drive came in at under $30 and is a great budget SSD to start out with. Sure, it doesn't have DRAM, but with that being said, this SSD is still miles better than having a hard drive. 256GB is plenty to start you off with, being able to house your OS, applications, and a few of your most played games. With this being said, if you're wanting to play games with massive file sizes like COD Warzone right out of the gate, then you may want to forego the SSD and just grab a 1TB 7200 RPM mechanical hard drive for $5 or $10 more. Again, I would recommend starting with the SSD and adding more storage in the future when you've saved up more money, but going for a traditional hard drive isn't the end of the world and the system will still run great with one. For the graphics card, I went with what is probably my favorite budget GPU, which is the NVIDIA GTX 1650 Super. This card offers amazing performance, which you'll see in the benchmarks, and is reasonably priced at around $170. I went with the Asus Tough version of the 1650 Super. This card has a dual fan design with a relatively basic heatsink and a backplate which looks quite nice in my opinion. This is the perfect card for people wanting to play esports games at high refresh rates in 1080p, and for people wanting to get 60 FPS FPS in today's most demanding games without breaking the bank. It's pretty power efficient, only using a 6 pin power connector, and one of the best features is the fact it comes with Nvidia's NVENC encoder. The NVENC encoder is extremely helpful for people who are wanting to stream to sites like Twitch. This takes strain off the CPU and has minimal impact on GPU performance. This translates to smooth gameplay on both your PC side and the viewer side. To power the system, I went with a good value for the money unit from EVGA. Power Power supplies are kind of overpriced right now, but this 500 watt 80 plus bronze unit is a decent value coming in at around $55. This is the 500BA model and it has a lot of great features. Beyond just being reliable, it also has all black sleeve cables, which isn't something you always see at this price point. It's non-modular, but that doesn't matter much because of the case we're using, which can hide all the excess cables away. Speaking of the case, what I went with is the Cougar MG130. This case is a steal at the $50 price it sells for. This case does have a tempered glass side panel, but you can get the non-windowed version of this case for $5 less, which I'll have linked in the description below. The MG130 is a micro ATX case with nice features like a power supply basement to hide the cables, magnetic dust filters, and a tempered glass side panel. Now this is a tinted tempered glass panel, so the parts are hard to see, but for $5 or $10, you could add an LED strip in the future, which would make it easier to see inside. Working in this case isn't the easiest, but if you follow my guide coming out next week, you shouldn't have any problems. Airflow is decent, and you can check out temps in the benchmark section coming up in a minute, but adding some extra intake fans later down the line wouldn't be a bad idea. All in all, for $550, you're getting a set of parts that will work well together, are all reliable, and should last you for years to come. Whether it's gaming, or gaming and streaming, the system will be able to handle it with ease. So now that you've seen all the parts and learned about why I picked them, I'm now going to be talking about performance. I tested a number of games for this video, but if there are other ones you'd like to see, let me know and I'll try and include them at the end of next week's video about this system. Starting things off, let's talk about the system's performance in Borderlands 3, which is one of the harder to run games out right now. I used the built-in benchmark at medium settings. Doing this resulted in an 83 FPS average, which is well above the 60 FPS mark. This is great to see and means that if all you need is 60 FPS, then you could probably crank up some of the settings and still get great performance performance. Next, let's talk about the super popular Call of Duty Warzone. I tested this game also at 1080p medium and saw an overall average in the mid-80s. In fast-paced situations like driving, the system
system stayed in the upper 70s, and when just walking around, the system stayed around the 90 FPS mark. In either situation, the gameplay felt super smooth, and this should be enough performance for the vast majority of people who want to play this game. Next up is the game I can never seem to escape, Fortnite, which I tested at 1080p Pro settings. With these settings, the system stayed in the mid to upper 100s the majority of the time, and it rarely ever dipped below the 144 FPS mark, which is great for those with high refresh rate displays. Now let's talk about Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which is another hard to run AAA game. I tested this using the built-in benchmark at 1080p medium settings. Doing this resulted in a 76 FPS average, which again is impressive taking into account the price of the system. Finally, I tested Doom Eternal at 1080p medium. The system stayed around the 80 FPS mark the majority of the time, and gameplay was very smooth and enjoyable. So as you can see, the system can game pretty darn well. Again, leave me suggestions for other games you'd like to see benchmarked. So now let's talk about streaming performance. I tested both COD Warzone and Fortnite streaming to Twitch using OBS. I streamed at 1080p 60fps. For COD Warzone, I locked the frame rate at 60 and for Fortnite, I locked the frame rate at 120. Doing this created a good experience in both games while streaming. Gameplay was smooth and enjoyable on my end and the stream was smooth and enjoyable on the viewer's end, which shows that the system is a good option for people wanting to get into streaming. Overall, for $550, this system is packing a pretty big punch. If this PC is something you want to build, I would recommend coming back to the channel in one week, which is when I'll be posting the full step-by-step -step guide on how to build this PC, and I'll also be showing you even more benchmarks of this PC. So yeah guys, I think this wraps this video up. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to give this video a thumbs up. Thanks again to Asus for sponsoring this video, and make sure to click the link in the description to learn more about their RTX cards. And as always, this is Matt from Tech by Matt, signing out.